we talked about the spiders and the daddy long legs and we watched the video remember the daddy long legs are not the most venomous spider they just can't bite us they actually don't have any venom at all and they're not spiders so remember that um you should have seen that and gone on the videos that i had you watch yesterday okay so spiders also will lay their eggs in a silk case. And this one's kind of interesting. So this wolf spider is making an envelope out of silk. And um, different spiders do different things with their eggs. Some carry them like the wolf spider. Some attach them to their web like the black widow spider. And some of them bury their eggs. All right, so how dangerous is the uh, daddy long legs venom? Did it not go? Didn't go. Here, now try it. Okay, so the correct answer is no venom, it's harmless. Okay, so here's the wolf spider, and it's kind of interesting because it looks, the egg sac looks pretty flat right here. But then she fills it up with eggs, and it turns into a round ball. And she'll carry that with her, and you can find them like that. And there you see, she'll just carry it right under her abdomen there until they hatch. Now, wolf spiders have parental care. After the egg hatch, the young actually ride on mom for several days. Now, this can lead to some unfortunate events if you find one in your house and try to squish it. I've actually had people tell me of this happening. So squish the poor spider and all the babies just took off everywhere. Okay, some young spiders disperse by silk lines or ballooning. And this is kind of cool. All of these yellow things are baby spiders. Spiderlings from every species use the wind to colonize new territories. Spiderlings instinctively climb plants to be dispersed by air currents. This group belongs to the wolf spider, which is a land dweller. Nevertheless, they choose to be airborne in order to find areas where there is less competition for food. When the spiderlings feel the wind, they produce a silk line that can carry them for a long distance. Isn't that cool? Sometimes you can see this when spiders have been doing this. You'll see just long, very thin spider webs drifting through the air.
Okay, so that's it for the spiders. So now we'll start on the centipedes and millipedes. Okay. So this is subphylum Myriapoda, the centipedes and millipedes. Myria means many, like a myriad. Pod means foot. So it's not a huge group. The first one we're going to talk about is subclass Chilopoda, the centipedes. That picture there, you can see one eating a snake, killing and eating a snake. Um, there's about 2,800 species. Most of them are very small, but there are a few large ones. Around here, we have some quite large ones. They have one pair of antenna, which is new. The spiders and the horseshoe crabs didn't have antenna. They have jaws, two pair of, pair of maxillae, and one pair of poison maxillipeds. They're dorsal ventrally flattened. That's the way you can tell a centipede from a millipede, which is important because centipedes are poisonous or venomous. Millipedes are not. So centipedes are flat where millipedes are more round. They have anywhere from 15 to 191 pairs of legs with only one pair of leg per segment. This is another difference with the millipede. The millipedes have two pair of legs per segment. Centipede means 100 legs. Millipede means 1,000 legs. So, and none of them have literally a hundred or a thousand legs. That's just what it looks like. But the millipedes are going to have more legs. So all the centipedes are carnivorous. And the eggs are brooded by the females. Sometimes they have parental care. Here's one of the ones we have in the desert around here. I know these are around. I've found them in my house several times. Um, not so much since we got our heater fixed, but for some reason before we got our heater fixed, we had a lot of these getting in the house and I had to take them away from the pets. The bite is really a pinch. There's the pincers, but they have venom. So um, they can inject venom when they do. The bite is, not, is usually not serious, but it can be quite painful. Several species are commonly sold as pets. Here you can see this one protecting her eggs. And the, the ones we have in the desert here, the female hatches the eggs and then they crawl on her and apparently they feed from a liquid that is secreted from her leg joints for weeks. So it's almost like she nurses them with milk. Milk obviously is strictly a mammal thing, but this is the same uh, same um, concept. Here's another one. Uh, I think these are more from Arizona, but they've got a really interesting adaptation. This is the head and this is the tail, but it's really hard to tell the difference. These last appendages are modified legs but they've got the same coloration and these legs look like the antenna. So it's really hard to tell what's the front and what's the back, which is good for something that's trying to attack this centipede, thinks it's getting one side and it gets the other. If it thinks it's grabbing the head to kill it quickly and it's actually grabbing the tail and the centipede can whip around and bite it. So yeah, there's also the house centipede, which was introduced into North America from Europe. Um, I've seen these a handful of times. They're pretty common in some places, not so much in others, but they're pretty cool to watch walk. You see how the legs move in waves. They're much shorter than most of the centipedes. But again, this one kind of has the same pseudo head. It's got the long antenna and then the long appendages at the tail. Okay, so subclass Diplopoda. These are the millipedes. They're more diverse than the centipedes. There's about 10,000 known species. They have one pair of antenna. 
they have jaws, but the jaws are much less intimidating. These are actually detritivores like worms. Basically, some, a lot of them eat dirt or they're herbivores. They're not carniv carnivores at all. Some of them have a chemical defense. They stink, not as bad as a stink bug, but a little bit. They have two pair of legs per segment and they're not as flat as centipedes. They're very rounded across the back. Here's where you can see how they have two pair of legs per segment. And you can see they're very, they've got a high back. They're very round. And they're cool to watch the legs move in waves like that a centipede was. Um, this is a species that's found in moist habitats. I've found them occasionally in the Houston area. And they can get to be about six inches long. We have a desert species. This is the one found in the east. It's got kind of blackish and reddish bands. The desert millipede can get up to six inches long and it's very similar to the other one, but more sandy colored for want of a better word. There's also a giant African millipede. I've had these before, they're very cool. They're a lot of fun. If we ever get back in the classroom again, I may order a pair of these for the classroom. They're pretty cool. Okay, so talking about fossil species, this is Arthropleura. It's a fossil from the upper Carboniferous about 335 million years ago. It was up to two and a half meters or eight feet long. You can see taller, longer than a man is tall. And um, there, here's tracks from one in Scotland, fossil tracks. And if you play Ark, that is a creature on Ark. So.